Good morning and welcome. Well, here we are again. Uh, we didn't think we'd be uh, back to uh, filming worship and, and not being able to meet in person, but uh, to keep everyone safe, we made some difficult decisions. Uh, you will be receiving the bulletin for this Sunday service, and there are a number of announcements that you should look at, but be reminded that they are subject to change. There are meetings that are listed that may not happen or may be done in some other fashion. Uh, so be aware of uh, those possible changes coming. So uh, please review your bulletin uh, when you receive it uh, and uh, be aware of possible changes. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Awake, people of God, and stay alert for Christ's coming. 
grace to you and peace from God who sent Jesus to us. Make your ways known to us, O God. Show us once more your awesome presence. We are all God's people. No one is excluded. Come together as God's family for worship and prayer. Let the mountains quake before you, mighty God. Let the nations tremble in awe and reverence. Praise the one who grants us the gift of life. Give thanks for God's continuing faithfulness. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God is true for all times and places. Our opening hymn is, We Hail You, God's Anointed. Amid threatening clouds of anger and selfish strife, come, O God, to bring light into our days of worry and anxiety. Send a competent hope. Enrich us with spiritual gifts that, that transcend disappointments and spill out in generous compassion for all your suffering children. Meet us today where we are so we may be equipped for trials yet to come, and for joys yet to be revealed. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is the beginning of Advent. 
the preparation time for celebrating Christ's birth. We are here because God's promises to our ancestors came true when Jesus was born. God's promise is kept each Sunday when we worship because Christ is in our midst. God will keep the promise to come again in glory. The word of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 2. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is hope. Because of Christ, we not only have hope, but we believe that good is stronger than evil. God wants us to work for good in this world. As the new year begins in the church, we seek to leave behind our past unfaithfulness. We remember our doubts and neglect, the empty times when prayer is forgotten and our focus is narrowed to petty concerns. God is waiting to hear from us. Let us pray. Awesome God, we confess the sin of our separation from you. We have blamed you for hiding from us. Rather than admitting, we have failed to see you in the thousands of ways you are revealing yourself every day. We have not called on you, and we have not listened for your call to us. Without you, we have become tiny islands of self-concern. Our links with the rest of your children are stretched and broken. Oh God, we long for that loving community in which your reign is acknowledged and your purposes are served. Move us to that place, we pray. Amen. And now will you offer your silent prayers of confession.
first reading for this morning comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9. The prophet says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you, as when, the, uh, as when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father, we are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. And our second reading for today comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is God's word given for God's people. Thanks be to God. And now for the children's message. I have an artist's rendition here of some people. You see there are a couple people and they're looking out and watching for something, but one person has fallen asleep, and they had a lamp, but the lamp has gone out. Uh, and this is an artist's rendition uh, reminding us of what Christ is saying in the gospel lesson that, we're, that I'll be reading in just a few minutes. And Christ is talking about when he comes again. We are in the Advent season, and we are preparing to celebrate Christ's birth. But Advent is also a preparation for when Christ will come again. And nobody knows when that's going to happen. It, it certainly hasn't happened for a very long time. But Christ says, keep awake. Keep awake. Like these people that are watching and awake and not like this person who has fallen asleep. Christ wants us to keep 
Christ in our hearts and in our minds, not to forget. It's easy to think about all the other things that are going on in our lives, but we need to keep focused on Christ and, and be anticipating Christ's return. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to keep awake. Help us to always be filled with the, that anticipation of you coming and creating a world where there is no suffering. For we ask it in thy holy name. Amen. Our Gospel lesson this morning is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heavens, and the powers of heaven of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Keep awake. This is a message that we have heard before. Earlier this year, we heard about the ten bridesmaids, and those very words were in that passage of Scripture. Keep awake. Keep alert. We are in the Advent season and we are preparing for the celebration of Christ's birth, but we are also preparing for the return of Christ. And Christ talks about that return, but he also gives us a pattern for
for the way that we should be prepared. He talks about a man going on a journey and he puts his servants in charge of things to do the work while the master is away. And so we are to not forget the work that we are called to, to love one another, to do the things that Christ called us to do, to feed the hungry, to visit the lonely, to clothe those needing clothes, to do the work of God's kingdom. Keep awake. It's easy to get bogged down with the busyness of life. So many things, and especially when we are preparing for Christmas, it seems like there are so many things to do. We're shopping and wrapping presents and decorating and cooking and baking and doing all sorts of things. But Christ said, keep awake. Keep Christ in the center of all these things. I, I just watched a uh, video of a man who sailed from uh, Los Angeles to Hawaii, single-handed. He, he sailed, I believe it was a 36-foot sloop from Los Angeles to Hawaii. And on the last day, as he's approaching Hawaii, he's still a ways out. He has spotted land, but he uh, it's going to be a while before he reaches land. And so that last night, he stays awake because he's in the shipping lanes. And he's going to be competing with other very large ships. And even though he has an alarm system, he has some radar and the alarm will go off, because he's in a shipping lane, there's always the chance that the alarm won't go off in time for him to avoid a collision. And so he has to keep awake. And so he sits with his coffee and his binoculars and, and fights sleep. And so we too are called to keep the watch, to be watching and waiting, to be actively waiting. and doing the work that God has asked us to do. It says, Beware and keep alert, for you do not know the time when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. Keep awake. Thanks be to God. Amen. Almighty God, help us to stay awake, to never lose that anticipation of your return that we may be filled with excitement and do the work of your kingdom with joy. For we ask it in thy holy name. Amen. We, uh, we do have uh, some joys and concerns. Uh, we have had uh, a number of funerals lately, and so we want to keep those folks 
in our thoughts and prayers. Um, it's a joy that we are able to, at this time, uh, still continue with worship. And we anticipate the time when we can gather together again. And so, as you look at our prayer chain, keep those on our prayer list in your prayers, and keep praying for all of us, for our nation, to heal from this pandemic. And pray that there will, again, be a time when we can gather together. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have showered upon us. You give us food and shelter, friends and family, the beauty of the earth, the changing of the seasons. You give us so many blessings, large and small. We are especially thankful for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the greatest gift ever given. And yet we know, and we know that you know, that life on this earth can bring about suffering, and so we lift up all who suffer this day and ask that you be with them. Where possible, heal bodies and minds for all strengthened spirits and for each and every one of us surround us with your great love that we might feel your presence know that you are God and know how deeply you care we ask that you be with our churches both the church universal and our local churches help us to be all that we can be we ask that you be with our government leaders on all levels of government. Give them wisdom that they might govern with justice and equity for all people. We ask that you be with our armed forces and all who serve our nation. Keep them safe and bring them home safely and soon. But most importantly, we would ask that not our will but thy will be done. For we ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
down in the benediction. The time is coming when God will call us to account. Be alert and watchful, serving faithfully day by day. We will look around us for signs of God's presence. We will open our eyes to ways to be helpful. Use the gifts you have been given to the glory of God. Let the testimony of Christ strengthen you in every way. We will share our spiritual gifts in word and deed. We will seek to be shaped by the Potter's hands. Grace to you and peace from God and Jesus Christ. Know that God is faithful and Christ walks with you. With hearts full of gladness, we will do what is right. With great joy, our lives will show forth our faith. Amen. Amen.